Good morning everybody. Um, no olden video this week. We're doing a wonderful, wonderful cemetery. Uh, they call it Bradford Cemetery, but I know it is Undercliff and it was uh, built in 1851 to 1854 by this landscape fella. I can't remember his name. I'll give a call Mark here. I'll put it in. Anyway, Undercliff is spectacular. The graves that we're going to see very, very shortly, just up these steps, are mind-blowing to me. Um, you know, I like a good grave. And uh, this is a real treat. Last, I felt a bit nervous coming here. And I think it's because last time I came, um, I got stalked <laughs> off this fella. Anyway, I'm sure that won't happen today. Uh, and I've got my phone handy if I need to, so let's get up hey. these stairs. Now, I have filmed this before, years ago, on my iPad, and I didn't have any research knowledge or anything. So today's video, we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the stones. I don't know how long the video is going to be. Um, straight away, I see a grave over here, which I think is phenomenal. Let's walk over to it. Um, but honestly, this place is wonderful. And uh, I think what we'll do, I think we're going to start from the other end. So I'm going to go up there. We're going to have a look at the big wigs. We're going to make our way back down. Um, and I'll show you Illingworth in a uh, while. So let's start from the top. Right, I can't help it. I've just got to give you a bit of a sniff it before we get to the top end. Check this out for a, for a, for a gravestone. Nope, it's not finished yet. Still going. Wow, isn't that amazing? Now right, let's get up top. Trying to keep the wind off the uh, microphone. Right, let's get over there. Bradford profited very well out of the Industrial Revolution and a great amount of people, or a large amount of people, <laughs> made the money here in engineering and I don't know if Bradford had a lot to do with cotton, I don't think so. But let's start with this first one and as usual what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get as many pictures and put in as much text as I possibly can. So I'm going to labour on the stones a little bit just so I can get as much information in as possible, if you know what I mean. So this one is in memory of John Steele, who was a surgeon. Now, he was born in Edinburgh in 1810 and he died in Bradford in 1863. His wife, Emily, is also in there. She died in 1888. And it's got a, uh, an inscription erected by his fellow townsman. Oh, right, so that's similar as to, um, what's the majig, isn't it? Uh, Edwin, Edmund, oh, I can't remember his name, that fellow I had pictured last week. Uh, in effect, remembrance of the alike loved as a friend and esteemed in his profession, skillful, kind, and self-sacrificing in the performance of his duty. His removal after 30 years, valuable service was felt and honored by all classes of the community as a public loss. Poor bugger. All right, let's have a look at this big and there's all sorts up here. I've looked at these stones before. There's barons, there's sirs, ladies. This is a beautiful, look at this one. Bloody sun strong. It's nice today, isn't it? Oh, and have you noticed? There's like scan codes, but I can't scan. Never mind. So this one is Robert Milligan Esquire. Another one that was born in Scotland, he became a resident in Bradford in 1808. His talent and industry guided by integrity and honour raised him to the high distinction as a merchant. He was the first mayor of Bradford in 1847. He represented the town in two successive parliaments with fidelity and diligence. He was a generous and warm-hearted 
sorry, he was generous and warm-hearted in his hospitalities, liberal in his support of religious and ben benevolent institutions, departed this life, the faith and hope of the gospel, on July the 1st, 1862, was 75. His wife, Phoebe, is also in there. She was born in 1976 and died 1868. Look at that. We're going to get some really, really good video out of this today, I think, people. And um, grab yourself a beer or get yourself a cup of tea because uh, you're going to love this one. There's one over here, which is really, really impressive. In fact, they all are. Look at them. Look at them. Let's have a look at this one. Look at this one. Now this is family Burns. Burns is a Jewish name. Um, so I thought Jews got buried in Jewish cemeteries. Uh, I'm of Jewish descent, by the way, but non-practicing. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to walk on the grass, but this is the grave. Oh, this is spectacular, everyone. Anyway, this is the... Um, grave of Sir Jacob Burns, so he was a knight, born October, oh sorry, 20th of November 1806 and he died 22nd of April 1889. Also Wilhelmina, that's a beautiful name, uh, his daughter's in the grave too, and also Gustav, son of the above, born in 1846, he died in 1933. And then on the other side we have Sir Jacob Burns' wife Doris, she died in 1884, Sons, in, sorry, I heard a noise then. The sons in there, and Frederick, and everyone. Clara, look, look at it. It is unbelievable. Edward, look at this. Edward Bont Broner, MD. Um, he bought. He died in eighteen eighty-six. Uh, also, with Herman, his son, Charlotte, his wife. And Adolf, mm. uh, MD, son of the above. All doctors. Look at this. I'm telling you, this place is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm so so excited to be here. I absolutely love it. Now, where the bleed now's the marker. It says it's the Holden family. I'm going to be fuming if there's no marker because I'm supposed to know who's in there. And look, everyone. Can you see in? Jesus Christ, you can only see in. Look, can you see in? Let's have a look on this side. You can see inside it. There's a... Can't see much. There's a, there's a pillar. And there's some bricks in there at the bottom that someone's put in. And I imagine the bodies are on slabs behind. Amazing. Oh, someone, someone joining us there, everyone. So, who else have we got? Right, I'm going to stop filming and I'm going to start from the top and then we'll work our way back down. Look at this bit here, it's all overgrown. So literally, if you come here and you've got a scan code, and I'll focus on, I'll keep my eye out for these scan codes because these will be notable graves. Sorry, you can see it's my big shadow, can't you? Uh, this is William Jackson. It says. I don't know what that's supposed to be. This isn't William Jackson. What? Or maybe this is William Jackson whose grave I'm actually stood on. Good God. No, I don't like doing that, don't you, everybody? Let's keep going. So this is Fred Greenwood Smith lost his life in the tramway accident at four lane ends Carling Carlington or Arlington in 1889 also Thomas Greenwood of Cliff Villas in Manningham he died in 1905 and also Elizabeth wife of the above don't know if that's Fred's wife or Thomas's wife I imagine probably Fred's can you see in the stone at the top the beautiful detail and the stone glistens? I wonder what kind of stone it is. It's glistening. So this is another gra a grave. You know, I said, because I've got because uh, I've not got any kids and probably no husband in sight, I said when I go, I want my house selling and uh I want it to be erected <laughs> on top of my grave. 
Um, a bit of a weirdo, aren't I? So anyway, in here is Moses Briggs. He was born in 1837 and he died in 1885, I think that is. Also his wife, Hannah, and Ruth, their daughter. Uh, oh, they must have had some millions and billions and trillions. You know, it's difficult when you're in a, in a place like this, literally there's so many beautiful graves, but the pull of these big massive monuments. I, I'm looking and seeing stuff that I want to look at, um, but I just can't stop looking at these big ones. And uh, I might have to come back and do a part two because I'm going to do loads today, but anyway. So in here we've got jo Job. Ah, you know, it, um, Eli Lees, he had, a, he had a brother called Job. Um, it's not the same person, obviously, but this, listen to this name, Job Cheeseborough Pratt, youngest son of Christopher and Jane Pratt, Cheeseborough, so that must have been his second name, what a strange name, oh, poor bugger died in 1896, he was only 37, his wife died in 1898 at 77, Jane, and uh, Christopher Pratt, Who's the father? He's also in there. He died in 1903. Bloody hell. Let's keep going, everyone. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. This is in loving memory of Emma, the beloved wife of William Sharp. Fish a fishmonger. A fishmonger. Afforded this. I think, though, you know, back in these... In, imagine, I don't know. Right, let's have a look at it properly rather than going off on one. Right, so this is in loving memory of Emma, the beloved wife of William Sharp, fishmonger of Bradford, who died July the 1st, 1896, in the 66 year of her age. Also, William Sharp, who died April 7th, 1900, he was 70. And the, no, the stone says, The world is my country, all mankind are my bre brethren, and to, go and to do good is my religion. We miss thee and mourn thee in silence and scene and dwell on the memories <coughs> of joys that have been. Right, I'm not going to... Right, should we get down the other end and just see what's down there? And then we'll make our way back down the steps, down that end, and we'll have a look at the um, the Illingworth stone. I'm just thinking, you know, if that one over there hasn't got any markers on it, I don't think Illingworth has either. So it might be really difficult for me to find out who they were, which isn't good. But, ah, look, these people must have been Jewish. Can you see the Jewish star? So maybe, maybe back then there wasn't such a thing as Jewish cemeteries. And really, what difference does it make? Not any, as far as I can see, but... Can you see it? It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I really hope you enjoy this video, everybody. I just I just love cemeteries, you know I do. And I get really excited when I work out who's in who's in them. I think it's in and I'll tell you why. I think it's really important that when I mean, obviously these people put these monuments up for us to remember these people and I think, you know, um as you know I don't do I don't do new graves or you know the, the the oldest the newest i tend to go to is like early 19s and I, I do that for a reason because i think you know there's still people who are alive who, alive who may have attachments to them and i wouldn't want to upset someone if you know what i mean but uh but these are absolutely remarkable and and i just yeah just have to show you right i'm not going to keep filming just to walk down here but i will join you back down the bottom end I know that the demographic of my, uh, I think that's the right word, isn't it? Demographic. Anyway, people, the majority of the people that watch the channel, I know are, tend, or tend to be over 40, as I am. <laughs> uh, but I know there's a lot of people who, who are also, um, you know, a lot more advanced in years. So, you know, I've got people in the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, I think, for the people that have messaged me. And I'm sure many people will be, remember a film that came out in the 60s 
Um, it was a wonderful film. It was filmed in Manchester and Bradford, and it was actually built in, filmed in this cemetery. It was called Billy Liar. I wish I could remember the name of the actor, Tom. Can't remember his name. He's still got. He's still alive. He's still going. But anyway, they uh, they filmed all the scenes in the Bradford Cemetery uh, just down here, and I'll show you some of the tombs, and I'll try and put some. Um, so what I'm looking for, I'll try and put some footage in to show it you. Right here we go. This fella was really, really important. Everyone's important, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, the stone itself is amazing. Look at it, it's got a cross at the top. It's got all of them notches, it's not worn over the years. So William Mawson, I'm gonna go closer. This is William Mawson, he was an architect of Bradford, son of Murray, William and Murray Mawson of Leeds. He died 25th of April, 1889. And also Mary. Let's have a look at him. Oh my God, I have never seen this before. Look at this. Look at this. This is like what you see down in um, that, that one in London. Oh, look how beautiful it is. Let's have a look at her. She's got a baby, look. She's marble, I think. Beautiful. Um, let's have a look at the from the other end. So let's have a look at the people in the grave. They lived in Wood Woodlands, Middleton, Ilkley, eight, 1964, the last one who we were put in. So let's have a look what it says here. So we've got Anne, wife of William Wagstaff, Barlow, died in 1867, December 30th. We've got William in there as well. William Wagstaff Barlow. Born in 1822, died in 1891. We've got Sarah Elizabeth. Their infant child. Oh, their infant child. Born April 6, died 1859. We've got quite a few people who died in 45, like 1945. 80 years. They didn't get. They didn't succumb to the war, I suppose, unless they were bombed. I don't know. And then we've got William Henry, who was a solicitor. He died in 1881. He was their son. And also Catherine, wife of William Wagstaff Barlow. Wonder if he got married again then? Because she died in 1901. He must have married again. Because she would have died, I mean, 1867. He did die till another 30 years. He's married again, hasn't he? But that is absolutely beautiful. Can you see that? Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? In terms of graves <laughs> I think that's amazing Illingworth this is in the film the Billy Liar film and we can actually see inside this one too so we're gonna have a look through the door <laughs> oh my god you can see the coffins <gasps> There's urns in there. Can you see the urns? There's urns and coffins and oh my word! Oh no, it's not a coffin. Oh, it's not a coffin. It's it's pottery. There is a grave in there though, but they're inside. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, God, I'm scared then. <sighs> Beautiful. Look, he's got the Egyptian. That is unbelievable. Right, so let's have a look at the rest of what we've got here. And then I think we're going to make tracks, but I will come back. Um, I'll definitely come back and uh, do some more.
see that grave there with the, with the things missing on it, that ring old them, they'd pull it down. Uh, they say, no, it's too dangerous. <laughs> you know they would, don't you? So anyway, this was part one of Undercliff Cemetery, people. I will come back again if you like it. There's plenty more for us to see. I mean, we've literally just touched the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, today. Um, but it's a wonderful place, and if you can come and look, I'd highly recommend it. Um, and that's us. We're done. <laughs> so I will definitely see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.